All right, so the next thing we're unboxing is our CPU cooler. I've been kind of enamored by liquid cooling of uh, the CPU for quite a while. Um, I read a review. This seems to be the top top of the line model. It's because it's got best performance and it's got some features we'll talk about later that make it work extra extra well on on both Intel and uh, AMD builds. But I did some review of this particular version on Jay's Two Cents YouTube channel, and he noted that no matter how hard he pressed his um, AMD processor, uh, it would never run a thermal headroom with this with this cooler. So <clears throat> this was kind of the basis of my bill. I said, well, I'm just going to buy the biggest cooler I can just because it's it's uh, going to last for eight years, hopefully. And um, although I think the warranty of these are only like four years, so I'll have to double check the warranty. Uh, I just didn't want to worry about thermal headroom. The AMD processors are new to me, and I don't remember that being an issue with the Intel processors. Maybe I don't remember properly, but anyway, this is a six year warranty, so that's good. So probably the last eight years. It does include thermal paste, which is good. Now the last, uh, last CPU, which you look at my uh, midlife crisis video series, uh, the EVGA cooler I bought uh, had, a, had the paste already applied to the cold plate. So it'd be somewhat different, so we're gonna have a little bit different installation for that, but that's okay. All right, so let's open this up and see what's inside. Uh, first, we'll check the back side. It's got all of these specifications. It's compatible with AMD 5 and 4 and Intel LGA 1700. And it talks about the VRM fan that's on the on the cooling block and uh, all the voltages and everything it needs, the radiator fans, the thickness, the thickness on there. Um, here's the thickness of the fans and the, let's see, I think the, this is, the fans are 27 millimeters, I'm pretty sure the, uh, Radiator is uh, 35 millimeters. So. so anyway, this is the basis of my build. So I bought the case based on this. So the case we're using can put this in the top of the case. So that's going to be important. And so we're, now we'll open it up and see what's inside. All right. So this opens this way. It looks like kind of like crazy opening system there. Okay, like that. Oh, that's not so crazy. Okay. I thought it opened this way. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. Oh, it's kind of double box. That's nice. And the other box is very thin, but still. It's got cardboard, uh, cardboard um, uh, packaging on the inside. Let's see what's in this. This is uh, some cables, mounting screws, the thermal paste, the standoff, and the brackets with. Uh, Attachment to the motherboard. I think it's not important. And here is the. I think this is the adapter for Intel, so I don't think we have to use this. I don't remember reading about it anyway, so we'll put that aside for now. I'll slide everything out of here if we can. So I'm going to take this part apart. I think so. All right, so one attractive thing for me is that it's got this separate fan. That goes down on the motherboard. That seems like a pretty obvious, uh, pretty obvious thing to do because it helps increase the circulation of the air over all the power, uh, uh, power um, uh, uh, regulation on the board. So normally the air is all flowing this way. So now we have air going down and out across all the power re regulating stuff. So that seems like a really good design. And this can come off, it just holds on by magnets. So, that's kind of cool. so as you install this uh, cold plate on your CPU, and then you put this on, when you're all done, you put this on top, and it's got, it's got some little connectors here that connect the power and the controls uh, from a, uh, a very corresponding connector on the cold plate. So that's nice. All right, so it comes with fans. Um, if I have room, I'm going to do a push pull fan like I did on my other build. This is a giant radiator. And uh, it's got 140 millimeter fans, three of them. It's got a really thick radiator. Like I said, I think it's uh, 35 millimeters, and the fans are 27. 
but I think there's enough room at the top of the case to put um, some Noctua fans I have uh, as a uh, to do a push pull. So I'm gonna try that. I mean, I have the fans, so why not? Let's figure out a little bit more of this packaging, then we'll finish up for now, and then we'll, we'll come at it again once we have the case out and start to install things. Right, so we'll take some of this plastic off. Get a look at it. in here. There's the cold plate. Please peel off label before you use it. Okay, so this is like a little label to protect the cold plate. So we're going to put this bag back on it. We don't want to get that scratched up. There's a little label on there, but you have to remove it. And then you, you uh, so it's got a top of cold plate, which is what you'd expect. Once you remove that label, and then put it on the thing. So, so here's our. Uh, Radiator, so again, it's super thick. It's got these fans here. They're supposed to be pretty quiet. Uh, we'll see. Um, one of the one of the one reason I like water coins is because it's, I think it's it's probably the best way to cool things. Um, is that it's quite, it should be quieter than a uh, air cooler, and um, although the air coolers are getting a lot more advanced than when I first started building PCs, obviously. And so we'll see. This may be the last water cooled build I do. I'm not sure. In any case, like I said, we're going to try to do a push pull system and we'll just see if there's enough room in the case or enough clearance on the motherboard. All right, our next thing is going to be our C drive. So this is a uh, M.2 M SSD that's going to go right directly on the motherboard. And we have one of these on our existing computer. It's worked great. It was only one terabyte. so. I kept another one terabyte for eight years, but it was getting kind of close uh, because some software really seemed to want to be installed on the C, on the C drive. And again, since I'm keeping most of my data on the D drive, I don't, this doesn't build up a lot. It's just whatever software on the operating system and whatever other drivers and other things that needs to be on the C drive. So, so this is uh, about twice as fast as the SSD we have now. This is a PCIe. 4.0 and the other one is you know is eight eight years old so it was pretty soon after the m2 drives came out at all so all right so let's open this up i think we have to cut this one side and it'll come out okay all right so it's got a nicely covered thing here let's see Here's the manual, kind of glued to the bottom, that's interesting. All right, so this thing was just kind of floating in there, that's interesting too, so. So there it is, it's nice and, it's not very big. We'll put this cover back on, we'll flip it over, and we'll see if we can get the manual out. It's like I said, I think it's glued. I guess you're not supposed to open, you're not supposed to remove it from that. So we're gonna, some perforations here, so we're gonna hit the perforations. And the paper is tearing anyway. I, I think this is a bad, a bad design of packaging. I don't, I don't think this is that great. I'm not sure what this is supposed to accomplish here. I have to tear it anyway. So, all right, so let's see what we've got. Looks like that's it. Okay. All right, so it's got the insulation guide and the warranty, and this is also sealed. Interesting. I guess it doesn't get bent. Okay. Insulation guide. Okay, this insulation guide in a bunch of different languages. So, install Samsung Magician. I don't think I'm going to do that. Take full advantage of the SSD. Is it recommended to install Samsung Magician? Basically, it says uh, you use the installation instructions according to your motherboard. Okay, that's fine. I already, I already know how to install it, so it's not a big deal, but. I'll have to look up Samsung Magician and see if it makes any sense. My guess is this is some spyware or something. No, they can they can monitor how you're using their drive and send them send them some data or something like that. So we're probably not going to do that. I don't seem to need that extra software on the, on the PC. So, all right. So that's the 99 Pro PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD, uh, two terabytes. In the back, it's got a bunch of blistering speed information. So, again, it's twice as fast. A lot of things are going to be twice as fast on this computer as my old computer. And for a while, it would seem twice as fast, but eventually, with any new computer, you get used to it. 
and then it starts doing the same thing. So your expectations change. All right, so here's the other other uh, M.2 driver putting in our new PC, and this is four terabytes, and it's a uh, Gen Five PC 5.0 uh, from Crucial. It's a T1 T700, and um, it's up to one eight one point eight times faster than Gen Two and four times faster than Gen Three. And now uh, most of our software was installed on a rotating, you know. Uh, uh, regular hard disk drive. So this is, although I, I'm saving this for games. So this is just going to be the game drive. I'll call it Drive G. So all of our games, that, that was some things I had to install on the C, the SSD drive on my first computer. That's where it's starting to run out of room. Because some games wanted to really be on an SSD. I had most of my software on the, uh, on the regular hard, rotating hard disk. So, so for this computer, I, I bought a new, um, SSD, M2 SSD for the system drive, but then we bought this one specifically for games. So, and any other software like maybe my video editing software, I'll probably put on there too. That'll make it load faster. It does load pretty slow. So, anything we want super speed on, we're going to use this. So, that's great. So, that's a good reason to get four, four terabytes. Again, this is future proofing. I'm hoping this, this uh, computer lasts another eight years like the last one uh, with minimal upgrades. And, um, uh, so this is the latest and greatest PCI. Now it's not the world, it's not the exact fastest one, but I had a little bit of trade off with the cost versus speed. This was pretty expensive, but again, we're going to be using it for eight years. The cost is not going to be it's it's going to be amortized over that time. So let's open this up and we'll see what's inside. All right, so here we go. Open this, up. this one opened up easier than the same so. A much simpler packaging, and the manual is not in a crazy uh, envelope like the other one. So I this is, I guess there are SSD drives that are smaller. I'm not sure what that little oh well is there. But here's the ma here's the manual. The memory and storage experts. All right. Well, I did buy Crucial Memory. I think. Let's see. Let's see. No, I didn't. I didn't buy Crucial Memory. Okay. I bought G skill memory. All right. Anyway, so uh, let's see. Got the support site, warranty information, three year limited warranty, or three year limited three year or limited five year warranty. Micron computer, that's a name blast from the past. Okay, that's how it owns crucial. That's interesting. Okay, so again, is there anything about installation? Oh, getting started. Okay. Well, again, we know how to install an M.2 drive, and if we need to, we'll consult the motherboard documentation. So, this one is much better packaged than the other one that isn't flopping around inside that package. And uh, it's uh, it's going to be the it's going to be satisfy my need for speed. All right. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas, and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.